Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Now, yesterday on the channel, I read out the birthday of young Ethan, who turned eight years old. Um, and Ethan's favourite puzzle type was Killer Sudoku. Well, Ethan, today you're in luck because we are going to be having a look at a Killer Sudoku called Ravine by the great Jay Dyer. Uh, Jay has been making just incredible, incredible Sudokus uh, over the last well year or so and um, I am assured that this one is no exception and I sort of understand why it's called ravine now I stare at it for a moment because it looks like it's got a great big gap a ravine indeed down the uh, down the center if we just highlight that that definitely looks like a ravine sort of fenced in doesn't it by canyon edges on both sides so very pretty indeed uh, I think this is quite a difficult puzzle though. It's got four stars out of five for difficulty on Logic Masters Germany. And the emails that we had that recommended this one to us said that it's a challenge. So <laughs> we'll see what that means in a moment or two. What do I have to tell you about today? Well, I'm going to start with the frivolous news, which is that I did release a StarCraft 2 video onto the channel earlier on today. Uh, many of you have been asking for it. I hope you don't mind. There are some comments on the video saying, I, I don't know what's going on. What is StarCraft 2? It's a real-time strategy game. It's my favourite computer game of all time. And I wanted to try and complete this speedrun challenge, uh, which is what the video is all about. So for some of you, I hope that that's what you wanted to see. You get to see my StarCraft 2 play in all its glory. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah. Anyway, the less said about that, probably the better. Um, over on Patreon, we have released a great slug of videos today about Jay Dyer's uh, Sudoku hunt. Um, so this is Numeric Alchemy, uh, the Sudoku hunt, which was our patron reward for January. And Jay herself has made some videos for us to talk through how to solve some of the puzzles. So we've started to release those. I think we've got the first five up there and there'll be more to come. We've also actually, we've got another slug of videos being re released probably tomorrow uh, about last month's um, The Snake, the Secret uh, Snake Society um, puzzles. There were, there were some videos outstanding. They are coming out on Patreon tomorrow. So that should, that should all be good. I think Mark's also got a crossword video coming up on Friday on Patreon, which I haven't watched yet, but is him solving a puzzle that I created, a cryptic crossword I created uh, in the early 2000s. Um, so I won't say too much about that, not least because I haven't watched the video, but I, I am definitely going to watch that video with interest um, as soon as I've got time. Uh, I've got some birthdays to do today, actually. Uh, let's start with Hannah. Hannah, you've turned 10 today, and I know this. I think it was your dad, Matthew, who wrote to us. And Hannah, I think your favourite thing about the videos is doing a bobbins count, so I shall try to accommodate that today. Um, also, Janine, I know it's your birthday today. I think you're going to have a wonderful day, actually. You're over in Copenhagen, a city I've never been to but would love to go to, so enjoy that with your boyfriend, Aaron. Um, and Kelly in Chicopee, Massachusetts. Um, and uh, I know it's your birthday because your fellow math lover, Chris, uh, wrote to us. And Chris has agreed to bring you the chocolate cake the next time you meet, meet up. If, if I stipulate that chocolate cake is required, well, I certainly stipulate that. So look forward to that, Kelly. Um, it's also another constructor's birthday today, Math Pesto. Um, and Math Pesto, I suggest you watch Mark's video later on this evening um, because you might enjoy it. I'll say no more about that. And then finally, I've got some names of patrons who correctly solved the whole of Jay's, um, uh, Jay's hunt. So very well done to Jan Lim, Andrew Miller, Bill Alsop, Senator Gronk, Fool on Hill, who described Jay's hunt as the best set of puzzles they'd ever done. Now, Fool on Hill solves a lot of puzzles, so that is praise indeed, Jay. Um, Carolyn Offutt, Surab Das, John Gemmel, Megan Swanson, Ben Taylor, Abinaf Jane, Tran Chi Hui, um, Jan Philip Bultman, Jim Davis, John Rice, and Anna Killian. 
you all sent in the correct answers. Very well done indeed. Now let's get on to Jay's Ravine and see what the rules are. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. Digits cannot repeat within a cage. So those seven cells there sum up to 42, or those seven digits in those cells sum to 42, and we can't repeat a digit, so we can't do something like this. That's not gonna work. It would help us get to the total, but it would be, and these nines obviously don't see each other through normal Sudoku rules. They're not in the same column, they're not in the same row, and they're not in the same three by three box, but they are in the same cage, and that is not allowed. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. My eyes are instantly drawn. Well, to a few things, actually. There's a 24 cage in three cells, which must be a 7, 8, 9. There's a 7 cage in three cells, which must be a 1, 2, 4. So I'm actually going to fill in the 3, 5, 6 that must form the balance of box number 9. There's a 689 cage adding up to 23 in box one. The nine cage can't be 612 now, so that so it has got a three in it, because it's either 234 or 135. Um, mm, okay. Now the other thing I'm seeing involves well, I suppose it's it is a version of the secret, isn't it? Let's talk about the secret. Let's talk about the secret. Now, the secret is something I only share with my favorite people. But if you're still with me, six minutes, 47 seconds into the video, of course, you deserve to hear the secret. And the secret is that any complete row, any complete column, and any complete box of a Sudoku contains the digits one to nine once each. And if you add up the digits one to nine, have I got the right glasses on? No, I wonder if I couldn't see properly. Um, if you add up the digits one to nine, you get 45. And that is the secret. Um, because, so if we know that a complete row adds to 45, let's, let's, let's examine this cage a little further. Because this is seven cells large. Now, if it was a nine cell cage, because it, you, you can't repeat a digit in a cage, we now know it would sum to 45 because it would contain all the digits one to nine once each. It's not a nine cell cage, it's a seven cell cage and it still managed to sum up to 42. So it's done very well for itself. It has, It is chock full of high digits and you can immediately see it because it must be missing two of the digits. Um, it must be two digits that add up to the difference between 45 and 42, which is three. So two digits that sum to three in Sudoku, it's a one and a two. So there are no ones and no twos in that 42 cage. Which means I suppose that one and two in box four have to be in those two of those three cells. And we can see that because we cannot put ones and twos in a three cell 21 cage without the other digits having to be double digits at least, or one of them being a double digit at least. Um, and, and this way round, this 28 cage has sort of underperformed, hasn't it? So it's missing two digits that sum up to 17, being 45 minus 28. So it's missing eight and nine and benefits from no high numbers. Okay, and that means that eight and nine in box six go in those cells because you can't put eights and nines in nine cages. Oh, no. Okay, you can put an 8 or a 9 in a 13 cage, though, so it doesn't quite work the same way. I see. So there's some sort of symmetry going on. It's the same in that box. Look, 1s and 2s. I could put a 1 or a 2 in a 15 cage. I can't put both in, so I know one of those digits at least is a 1 or a 2. I know one of those digits at least is an 8 or a 9. But the next thing that catches my eye here is set theory because this this pattern here and this pattern here indeed have become redolent in my mind at least with uh, Ard van der Vatering's trick um, now that trick which which I think Ard created a well Ard created a puzzle that I think used 
sort of that relationship so it sort of had some cages in a relationship you know in those cells and then some cages in these cells which we haven't quite got here but we can presumably adapt oh actually yes i have got my i have got my scrabble bags aha i will use my scrabble bags to try and explain what i'm about to do in fact let me do it and let then we can see whether it's actually going to give us anything so what i want to do is to compare those cells with those cells so what is that looking like let me just get rid of those for a second or two and stare we could get rid of the could get rid of the boxes could get rid of boxes one and nine apologies i will explain what i'm doing i just don't want to do this and then find it's not relevant um hang about no i'm not actually spotting what it is that i'm okay yeah okay oh it's definitely doing something i don't know what it is i'm not i'm not going to claim it's doing more than that but it is it is worthy of exposition i think so i'm going to persevere with it so what I'm going to do, in fact, I probably should use um, the colors of my, my bags, which are orange and blue. Um, I'm going to label those 36 cells. Um, and I'm going to imagine that each of the digits in the correct solution to this puzzle uh, in the orange cells is put on an orange Scrabble tile. So that would mean there would be 36 Scrabble tiles with digits on, like these. I, think, I don't know if you can see this. Look, there's a Scrabble tile with a digit on it. There's another one. You'll have to trust me. I'm going to say there are 36 Scrabble tiles in there with, with these digits on. And we know exactly what this bag contains, because, of course, this, this, the correct solution is going to have the digits 1 to 9 once each in row 1. The digits one to nine row once each in row two etc so we know that those 36 scrabble tiles are going to contain four sets of the digits one to nine four digit ones four digit twos four digit threes etc all the way up to four digit nines now i'm now going to highlight these cells in blue a blue corresponding to my other scrabble bag which also just so happens to have 36 Scrabble tiles in it, which um, correspond to these blue blue cells. And we know exactly what those blue cells are because a complete column of a Sudoku will have the digits one to nine in it once each. So the blue tiles are going to be, f well, four digit ones, four digit twos, four digit threes, all the way to four digit nines. So if you followed that logic, you will realize that the orange bag and the 36 tiles in this one and the blue bag and the 36 tiles in this one, the, the contents are identical. So imagine that I now know the, the correct solution to this puzzle and I go find this digit, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is, but obviously that that digit corresponds to one tile in this bag and one tile in this bag and let's say i just remove it from both bags what could we then say about what remains well we could say that each bag contains 35 tiles now but they're the same 35 t digits in both bags because i've removed the same digit from both bags so i can do that for all of these cells that are in both bags and I would reach this situation where I would have 20 tiles left in my orange bag. And that looks like five times four. And I'd have 20 tiles left in my blue bag. And these again, these would be the same tiles at this point. And I can go further than that because I know that that box of the Sudoku, box one, contains the digits one to nine, once each. Well, that's exactly the same as this bag. So if I go through my orange bag and I find a, a tile with a one on it, a tile with a two on it, I'm going to remove those tiles from this bag, one set of the digits one to nine, 
and I'm going to remove one set of the digits one to nine from my blue bag, and it would still be true to say that my orange bag and blue bag contain the same set of tiles. In other words, and you can see, hopefully you can see, I didn't need to know what any of these digits were, but at this point, we have proved unequivocally that whatever's left in my orange bag, which I don't know how many cells that is, 11 is it, those 11 tiles that are left in my orange bag must be the same as the 11 tiles that I've got left in my blue bag. They are exactly equivalent. And that is interesting in this puzzle. Now, it might be more interesting than I first realized, but the first thing I think we can start to think about is, well, eights and nines, for example, because, because this 42 cage has all the digits in it apart from ones and twos. So it definitely has an eight in it and it definitely has a nine in it. But if, if we know for certain that there is at least one eight and at least one nine in orange, then we know for certain that there is at least one eight and at least one nine in blue. But in blue, we know the 28 cage has no eights and nines. We know the nine cage has no eights and nines. So I think we are proving, this is what I spotted before, that this is an eight nine pair, which is really amazing, isn't it? Oh, actually it is amazing. What, what about that 21 cage now? 21, you can't make 21 in three cells without an eight or a nine because five, six, sorry, five, six and seven only add up to 18. So that cell must be an eight or a nine. And in fact, this cage only contains one of eight and nine now. So if that's a nine, you can't put eight in this domino. And these would have to add up to 12 without using nine and without using eight. So that would be a five, seven pair. And if this is eight, we couldn't put nine in here. And we'd need we'd have um, we need thirteen, wouldn't we, without using eight or nine? So it would be six, seven. Right. So there's definitely a seven in here, which actually it doesn't look like it's helping over on the other side. Um, but what we can do is we can invert the logic now and think because I was I started off, didn't I, by thinking about eights and nines to get me this. But we can do exactly the same logic here, can't we? In the 28 cage, we know there's going to be a one and there's going to be a two because there are all digits in that 28 cage apart from eights and nines. Well, if there's an eight and an, if there's a one and a two in blue, and we know now that there is, where do we put the one and the two in orange? because we know there must be a one and a two because we know that the digits in orange are the same as the digits in blue. Well, we can't put the one and the two in there, so we've got to put them in there. Um, hang on. And I want to put them here. <laughs> um, that feels like by symmetry, that's what's going to happen. Why is, why is this a one, two pair? I don't know. I can't see why I can't. I can obviously can't put one and two in the 15 cage, but I can certainly put one of them in, I think. I don't know. Okay. Um, all right, I'm struggling with that. I, I know there's a one and a two in these four cells, so I'm just sort of trying to uh, use these corner pencil marks as an aid memoir for that fact, but I'm not sure whether I can prove that the one that this is the one two pair that we're looking for. These are not the droids we're looking for. Um, hmm. Okay. So what do I do now? <laughs> um, one thing I could do, which is not perhaps the most un unintelligent thought I've ever had. Uh, 
Yeah, okay, I'm going to try that. So, all of my logic... Yeah, that must work. All of my logic to get me these, these funny little shapes in the grid was predicated on how I on how I drew my four rows. I, I did these four rows, didn't I? And I compared it with those four columns in order to achieve my equivalences. But surely I can just run that same argument in those four columns. Um, oh, my phone's buzzing, that's fine. That's not an important one. So, oh, that's a properly unpleasant um, mixture of orange and green. So, those four columns there contain four sets of the digits one to nine. I don't have a green bag to show you, but hopefully we've got the idea now. Those four rows contain, whoopsie, these four rows contain four sets of the digits one to nine. So we will make, I need to pick a color here that's going to be visible. That's not too bad, is it? I was thinking about purple. Let me just check that. Actually, I prefer that. I can see the, 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 the red against the purple very naturally. So again, we can just run this trick in reverse. These digits are in both bags, so we can delete them from both bags without affecting our conclusion. We can take those out of green and these out of purple and know we've removed the same tiles from both. So, so now we've got a situation where we have got, we know that the green shape here is the same as the purple shape. But we've got we've got the same sort of equivalences that we've just been looking at, haven't we? Because we've got well, we know that there's an eight and a nine in green because there must be an eight and a nine in the forty-two cage, which means then ah oh no, it doesn't work again. Which well, it it means there must be an eight nine in purple which we can't put in the 28 cage. We know there are eights and nines in these cells, but I think it's the same as up here with the 15 cage, because I can put eights and nines, or I can put one of them at least in my 13 cage. Okay, sorry, I was hoping that was going to be better. Let's try it the other way round. Uh, so which way? So we know there must be a one and a two in purple in the twenty-eight cage. So there must be a one. Ah, that's better. So there must be a one or an one and a two in green. Well, we can't put ones and twos in the forty-two cage. The twenty-one cage can't have ones and twos. So oh, it's symmetrical. So it's the same. Yeah, it's the same sort of thing, isn't it? Ah, but hang on, now that... Yeah, it's, it's, it is. It's totally symmetrical with high and low digits. So when you do it one way round, when we did it with the orange and the blue, we got this 8-9 pair, which locked an 8-9 in here. When you do it with the, the green and the purple, you get the 1-2 pair there, which pop locks a 1-2 pair in, in the 9 cage, because if you try and make a 9 cage without a 1 or a 2, You'll be adding up three, four, and five together, and you will get 12. And 12 is more than nine. There is a knowledge bomb for you from cracking the cryptic. So, so we can only have one. So this, this nine cage, oh, this nine cage has got a three in it. Because it's the same as this nine cage. In the sense that, I, I mean, I don't know it is the same exact composition as that nine cage, but it's certainly... Because it can't have a 1 and a 2 in it, it cannot be 1, 2, 6, which means it's either 1, 3, 5 or 2, 3, 4, which means it has a 3 in it. Uh, in fact, it's either... Okay, that's so that's either a 3, 4 or a 3, 5 pair. Um, okay... <laughs> now would be an appropriate time, Hannah, for me to say bobbins. Um, wow, okay. I mean, that, f that feels like good progress, but I can't see... I can't see how to use it, really. Does it matter that I now know... Uh, 
Oh, it does. Yeah, okay. This, I, I mean, let me just pause here to say this is beautiful setting. It really is beautiful. And I think this is a puzzle I'd never have been able to solve a couple of years ago. Because, because these set equivalences are incredibly hard to understand without this, you know, without sort of Scrabble tile type logic. They just don't. You can sometimes get to them by whittling away digits, you know, doing Sudoku, but quite often you can't. And this, this is just pretty, isn't it? And and now I think we can use, we can use, use the fact that there's a three in blue, because there isn't only one three in blue. What do I mean by that? Well, if we look at the uh, the congregation of digits that we have in the blue set. I've got a 28 cage there, which I know contains all of the digits 1, through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. In other words, it contains a 3. Well, I've just worked out there's a 3 in, in my 9 cage in blue. So that means that this congregation of digits has two 3s in it, which means that orange has two 3s in it. Well, I can only put one 3 in a 42 cage, which means there is a 3 in, in these digits. Now, ah, uh, it still doesn't work, does it? Well, well, hang on. So now, Now these digits include one, two, and three. So one of those digits only must be in the 15 cage, because if two of them were in the 15 cage, the other digit in the 15 cage would be at least a 10. So those digits must be ones, twos, and threes. And one of the digits, one, two, and three, lives in here, but only one. which, oh look, it's so close to doing something clever, that. Oh, if one, two, and three are in here, what about the 13 cage then? Surely that has to have, well, it does have to have a low digit in it, because if, it, if the 13 cage was made up of no ones, no twos, and no threes, it would be at least four, five, and six, which add up to 15. So that digit is a one, two, or a three which is almost doing something in this row, look. Oh, good grief. I've got, I'd, sorry, I didn't see this. I've got a one, two, four quadruple, or th triple, I should say, in column nine. So there's definitely a four in this domino, which means that cell's not a four. It still doesn't do it. Nearly does it, but doesn't quite do it. Um... Ah, no, okay. All right, but, but but again, I think we can twist the logic again, can't we? Yeah, because this is so this is quite a symmetrical puzzle in a strange way. So you can see that I've just done been doing trickery with my blue set of digits. I'm now going to perform trickery again with my green set of digits. Because in green, we can say just as we said there were two threes in blue, there are two sevens in green because there's a seven in the 21 cage and there's a seven in the 42 cage, which means there must be two sevens in purple. I can only put one seven in the 28 cage by rule. So there is one seven in the, in this lot of digits, right? Okay. And again, it's exactly the same logic, isn't it? I can't put two of these high digits in a 13 cage. So these cells must be selected from seven, eight, and nine. One of the digits here is a high digit, which, yeah, no, that, right, here we go, here we go. You can't put nine in the 13 cage now, because if you did, one of these digits would be a one or a three. 
and that can't be because that one, two, and three are ruled out of these cells. Yeah, because nine in three, sorry, thirteen in three cells has to be a nine, a one, and a three. So if I make that a nine, that cell's meant to be a one or a three, which it can't be. If I make that nine, that's got to be a one or a three. So nine comes out, which means nine is definitely in this domino. If this has got eight in it, then the other two digits are adding to five. Ah, uh, well, hang on. The other two digits are adding to five. This would have to be a four and a one. Eight, four, one would be the only way that could work. And that would be a one. And that would be a two and that would be a four. And that would be a one and that would be a two. And basically the world would start to <laughs> click into place. Um, but I think if this is seven, it presumably takes a bit of the pressure off the 13 cage. If we have seven here, the other two digits add up to six, which would need a one. Oh, so this digit is never a three. Okay, well, that's useful. That's going to get me a four in the corner, not a three in the corner. But okay, we'll take it. Okay, so, so the, the thing I'm thinking is if this is eight... We need two digits more that add up to five, which can't be a two, three pair because one of these squares would need to be a two or a three, which is impossible. So we know if it's eight, it's four here in one of those and a one here. If it's seven, the only way of making seven in two digits, if it's, well, seven, if it's seven here, we need two more digits that add up to six, which are either going to be one, five or two, four. In other words, one of the digits in here needs to be a one or a two, which would have to be this one because of the one, two, three, triple. So that square is never a three. It's a one or a two. We get a one, two pair. We get a four in the corner. That is not a four. that cell uh, which we we could have I was going to say it couldn't be a one or a two because these ones and twos are different um, but that is unfortunately not going to help us because this could never have been a one or a two anyway so so that middle cell now by Sudoku is four, five, or six, because it sees seven, eight, nine, then it sees one, two, three. So it's four, five, or six. Which somehow somehow doesn't get resolved, which is that feels strange as well. Oh, Bobbin's right. And the thing that's quite terrifying about this now is that. I really don't have many more clues to work with here. Uh, okay. All right. So what we should do, I think. Okay. I'm going to sweat the blues a bit harder then. Because although I know there's a three in here. Oh, that's not a four. I just realized. Oh, maybe that's a simpler way to do this. No, okay. Um, well, I know that the, the digit that's not three in this pair is a four or a five. And the 28 cage is going to have a four or a five in it. In other words, back in orange, there have to be two of that digit. So the digit that's in here is repeated and it can only appear once in there. So that means there's a four or a five in this string of orange digits, which must therefore go in the 13 cage. So I don't really know how to pencil mark this. This is one, two, three. It's one digit from one, two and three and one digit from four or five. Now, is that useful? <laughs> Is that useful? Is there balm in Gilead? Um, or maybe it's this, maybe I can do. 
because down here I managed to get rid of the extreme digit from the 13 cage, which was the 9. So can I get rid of 1 from the 15 cage up here? If this is 1, the other two digits are either 5, 9 or 6, 8. I don't see why that's... Uh, no, sorry, I don't think that is under the same pressure. It might be, but I've got a 689 triple in column one. That's not a six. There's a lot of symmetry here. But again, it doesn't seem to do enough. OK, so let's run that logic in reverse. So this wasn't that helpful, was it? I tried to put, I tried to make use of the fact that this domino, well, one of the digits in this domino is appearing up here. Let's try this domino, because again, whatever accompanies the seven in this domino, it's going to have, let's say it was a six. There's going to be a six in there. So there are now two sixes we'd need to put in purple. We can only put one six in that purple. So this digit down here, Oh, no, this is better. OK, this is what we should have done, first of all. This is mathematically better. Right, the digit that's accompanying the high digit in this 13 cage is either a 5 or a 6, because we know there's a 7 in here, and there's either a 5 or a 6 to accompany it, which must go in down here, because it's repeating in purple. What if it was a 6? If there was a 6 in there, with the high digit, which is a 7, 8 or a 9, that would have to be a 0. That just doesn't work. So in fact, in fact, this is brilliant because now we know that there's a five in here with a seven because that's the only way this can have a positive value and we've done it. So that's a one. This is a five, seven pair exactly to add up to 13. There's no seven in here. So this is an eight, nine pair. There's, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, now there's no five up here. And if there's no five up here, you can't put five in there because then it can't appear the right number of times back in orange. So there's no five in there. So this is a three and this is a four, which means by maths, that's a two. This is not a four in the middle of the grid anymore. It's not a five. There's a six in the center of the grid by Sudoku. These are five and seven that adds up to 12. So that's a nine. That's a nine by Sudoku. We've got a six, eight pair here we can now, so now we know there's a four, oh, now we know there's a four in my 15 cage, so there's not a one in my 15 cage, because then that would digit would have to be a 10. So we get rid of one. So it's either four, right, so this digit, if that's four, three, that's eight. If it's four, two, that's nine. So this is eight or nine. Oh, it's not nine, it's eight. So that's eight, that's nine, that's eight. Um, this now needs to add up to seven to make it work so it doesn't include the two. So this becomes a three, four pair. <laughs> oh, this is lovely. Look at the way this is going now. This now, this two sees this square, that's a one, that's a two. Um, there's definitely a one in one of those cells by Sudoku. The eight is backing, backing into box one and giving us an eight and a six. So if there was a two in here, it would have to go there and that would be a three, four pair. Hmm, that's, that sort of looks possible, doesn't it? Can't see how to do that. Okay, let's try it. Let's carry on with Sudoku. That's a two, that's a one. Oh, right. So now if this is one, three, five, on the other hand, that's a one and that's a three, five pair. Okay. Uh, 
don't know how to do that. Um, let's instead, well, we can write eight by Sudoku in there. So we get an eight. Oh, this is gorgeous. Eight, nine by Sudoku, nine, seven by Sudoku. Don't tell me one, two by Sudoku using this two up here. That's no longer able to be three. That, oh, uh, no, that, that still can be threes, fives and sixes. What about that one? No, that's still got options. Good grief, though. That was that was just... Oh, nine. Nine goes there by splendiferousness. Uh, nine is in a domino in box number three. Eight is in... Uh, no, no, it's not. Eight is in one position in box number three, which places the nine. Which places a nine in this cage. That's our first digit we've got in either of these recalcitrant trait cages that we've been trying to deal with. How many nines have we got? Loads. I have got eight nines, I think I want to say. So I can put a ninth nine here. How many, how many eights have we got? Lots, but maybe not quite enough. Oh, I see. But I can put eight here in box eight, because remember, Eight is, well, actually, just by Sudoku. Let's just do Sudoku. I was about to say it can't go in the 28 cage, but Sudoku was good enough to do it using this eight up there. So actually now, yeah, that's an eight by Sudoku, and that must be the eighth eight. So that becomes an eight, and we get this weird eight, nine. I wonder if those two are going to turn out to be ones and twos wouldn't surprise me in fact it looks like it looks almost likely um what's going on now come on this must be nearly done now i think five sixes and sevens are in these cells that's not six in the corner five or seven in the corner that digit is that somehow under pressure don't think so. Oh, one is in domino at the start of row seven. Get rid of the corner pencil mark here. Is there something more? I don't think there is anything more I'm going to be able to establish from my... Yeah, from the set. I think the set is now used up, isn't it? Once we get these four things we already know exactly what the contents of the 42 and the 28 cage are so i think i think we're done on colors so i'm going to therefore force myself to actually focus on sudoku <laughs> uh okay let's hope that that was a good thing to do seven is in one of those cells by sudoku which means seven is in one of these cells by sudoku which unfortunately doesn't seem to be that useful. Two, three, four. I wonder if what I'm meant to do... Oh, I see. No, it's not too bad. Right. Oh, no, hang on, that's wrong even. Uh, what I was about to say was not correct. I was about to say there's a 5-7 pair here. And I need to put a 5 and a 7 in the 28 cage. And I was about to say, oh, that's great, because that lets me put a 5-7 pair here. But it doesn't. That could be a 5. And then that would be a 5. And that would be a quite different set of circumstances. Oh, dear. Okay. I mean, there are... It, um, I know that digit is not a 5 or a 7. I suppose that's true to say, because because the 5 and the 7 in the 28 cage are definitely in those four cells. So that cell is not 5 or 7, which means it's 3 or 4 by Sudoku. But I don't know which. Okay, sorry. Um, let's try that same trick with the three and the four at the top then. Hmm. Actually, this is tricky. <laughs> I can't quite see how to do this. Uh, there's a three and a four in those cells. So that cell is not three or four. So this square is five or seven. Which is just, again, it's the symmetrical logic to what we did there.
I don't know. All right, I'm gonna I'm going to resort to double click double clickage ones. What can we say about ones? Nothing. Twos. Okay, yeah, there's a small thing we can say about twos in box eight. It's got to be in these two cells. Don't actually think that does very much though. Two lives in a domino at the top of column seven. I think, mm, no, I was about to say we might have to do some Sudoku, but I'm not terribly enamored of that view. Oh, that cell's restricted, of course, because it sees the five, seven. Ah, oh, okay, so what's this digit? That digit can be three, one, two, three, four, five, or six, perhaps. I think by Sudoku, they are the two options it has. Four, five, six, seven, three or six. I can't see how to use it. Three, five, six, seven. That's three, five or seven in the corner. This is tricky. <laughs> this is really, really difficult. It's all of a sudden, I've just hit an absolute wall. Um, what's the equivalent of that one? That one. That one is not under the same pressure at all. Well, three, four. No, it is, but it's not. It's strange, actually. So that one had f this bottom one, that cell had five given digits in it or five no hard earned digits not given digits five digits i had to sweat tears and blood to get in the bottom row so you would think that it was going to be this row but i, I was just seeing three digits here but actually it still seems to be quite restricted i think that's a five seven pair we've got in this row because i'm just going to double check this but in this box you can see we need we need to place ones fives sixes and sevens and one and six, look at that square. So that is a five or a seven. So the symmetric, the symmetrical counterpart was sort of important, but for strange reasons. So now we've got all the high digits, actually. Oh, that's, oh, that's beautiful. That's just so stunning. Okay. Okay, so what's that digit? And the answer is, I don't know. I haven't got a clue, but I know enough to view this cell as quite, quite lovely. Because it's a two, three, or a four. Well, what's that nine cage got in it then? Well, it can't be a two, three, four, nine cage because it would el eliminate this possibility from existing. But we know there's a three in there, so it must be one, three, five, and I can place the one. That is quite simply sublime. So this is not three anymore. We've got a three five pair out of out. We get a one here by the power of magic, pure J Dyer magic. That becomes a one. There's a one in one of those two cells by Sudoku. How many ones have we got? We've got four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we've got that one and that one. A little X wing of ones left over. Five. Okay, this box now. We just got to place fives, sixes, and sevens. And some, somehow or other, nothing there is, is resolved, I don't think. Ah, bah humbug. <laughs> okay. Forgive me while I choke to death. Right, the, these squares are two, four, and seven. That's not able to be two. What about this three five pair? Is that working some magic? We don't know much about threes at all. We know a little bit more about fives. We've got two, four, six, seven to place. Um. <laughs> Um, what on earth is going on? That square does see a seven at least. 
So that squares 2, 4, or 6. That squares 2, 4, or 6. That sees the 7. Ah, is it the 7 in this column? Golly, golly, gosh, it is. Okay, so where does 7 go in this column, I think is the question I'm meant to now arrive at. That can't be 7. Yeah, okay, that does work. So that's 7, that's 7, that's 5. 5 comes out of here. Now, what's that done to the world? Anything magical? One always suspects so. With Jay's puzzles, seven comes out of here. What? Well, seven comes out of there. Three, five, six. Six. Ah, oh, good grief. Right. Okay, here is some, here's some proper beauty for you. It does work. <laughs> All right, this is a cute digit. This is a cute digit. I'm going to write in that digit. If you can't see how to do that, I would not blame you at all. I'm not quite sure how I've seen how to do that. But if you have seen how to do it, very well done. I said, pause the video, see if you can work out how to get that digit, because it's quite weird. Um, for those of you who managed to do it, congratulations. I'm going to tell you that this is a six, I think. And the, the way I got this was I was looking down this column and you can see I've got a two or four at the top. So I know there's a six in there. Now, if you look at this column, you've got exactly the same pattern. Look, these two cells have to contain a six. Now, what's this pattern called, the green cells? It's an X-wing on sixes. Um, and what's if you've never seen an x-wing you might wonder what i'm babbling on about but the key thing to appreciate um, can be understood i suppose by asking facetious questions so i'm going to ask a facetious question about these yellow cells i've just highlighted and the facetious question i'm going to ask is where or how many sixes are you anticipating finding in row six of this grid if we correctly complete the puzzle. Hopefully your answer to that would be one six. How many sixes are you expecting there to be in row seven of the grid if we correctly complete the puzzle? There's going to be one six there as well. So these yellow cells I've just highlighted contain exactly two sixes in the correctly completed grid. But I know that the green domino there has one six in it. And I know that the green domino there has another six in it. So the two sixes in the yellow cells are in those cells, which means all the rest of these cells are not allowed to have sixes in them. And that looks immediately quite interesting. I have, it, may, it may be actually be interesting for box six as well. But what I, what I notice from this is where do I put the six in this column? It now can't appear in these two cells. It's not there by the fact that there's a six in the middle. So that's a six out of absolutely nowhere. And it's probably going to do nothing. But well, although it's given me a five, seven pair there and it gives me a six in one of those two cells. And the five, seven pair here is doing what exactly? Well, that is doing something in the middle box, isn't it? Because now this digit, which was I was worried about being a 5 or a 7 before, can no longer be a 5 or a 7. So in the 28 cage, which where I need to put 5s and 7s, I can now legitimately pencil mark 5s into those cells, which means 5 in the middle box moves up to one of these two cells, which means this is a 5-7 pair. This is absolutely fascinating, isn't it? Um, 3, 4, 6. Now, that's a 6 naked single. Just this row. 3, 4 and 6 to place. That cannot be a 3 or a 4. So that's 6. That's 6 using our pencil marking. Beautiful. That becomes 6. That becomes 3. That becomes 5. <laughs> And that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, oh, that's wonderful. That is just wonderful. Now, 
Okay, that cell now. This is another cell that's five or seven. That seems to happen a lot. So, okay, so these digits are one, five, and seven by Sudoku. That digits are one by Sudoku. C's five and seven. So this is now, uh, oh no, I didn't want to do that. I want to get rid of the corner pencil mark. That's a five, seven pair. This is a one. I see. So these squares are two, three, and something. Two, three, and four. That's not two. It sees three here. Oh, so, sorry, it sees two there. So that's three or four. So that digit is now not four. That's two or six. That digit is two or six. So those digits are three and four. Ah, and the three here is helpful. Three, four, seven. Now that seven sees that cell. Five, seven, five, seven. Five, seven, five. Um, seven by Sudoku. Oh no, I was about to say something that would have been non. Oh, where does five? Yeah, that's not nonsense. Where does five go in this row? That's five, that's three. So that square has to be a four, just by the power of Sudoku again. This is a two, three pair, which means that square is a one. Okay, let's tidy up our pencil marks again. So this two, four pair needs to be resolved by something clever going on in these columns in order to allow us to unwind these top dominoes. Um, we've got a two, six pair there as well. Can't quite see how to do it yet, but maybe we're not too far away. This cell is a three or a four. This, ah, no, hang on, look, five and seven go in here, which means I must know that digit. That's a two. So that's a two. That cell's a four by Sudoku. So that's three. That's four. That's three. That's six, I want to say. Just looking at this row. So that's six, that's two, that's two, that's four, that's four, that's three, that's three, that's two. That square's become a four, and if I've not made a mistake, that's a five. And that might be the correct solution to the puzzle. Fabulous. <laughs> that was sick, Jay absolutely sick there there i mean there's so much to admire about this i cannot tell you the the geometry the trickery at the start and it's it's quite a simple idea well is it simple no that's totally not true it's not it, well, it's a no it's a very elegant idea that you can sort of you can do odds trick in two directions that is an elegant idea and i love the fact that you could sort of pin down the digits that you had to find in these you know those sort of cross that cross shape that was just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and i'm very proud of that if it was necessary which it probably wasn't i was probably missing a simple digit or something but we got to talk about x wings as well as a bonus and we got a three in the corner couldn't ask for more Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.